We've profiled various companies' approaches to CX and some for EX, but how does employee experience work for one of the happiest places on earth? I thought that it would be interesting to see how any small or medium company could implement their way of working, making their own environment Disney-like without having a big budget. An inside look at the employee experience at a Disney theme park and how you can adapt some of its principles on this episode of the CX Leader Podcast. The CX Leader Podcast with Steve Walker is produced by Walker, an experience management firm that helps our clients accelerate their XM success. You can find out more at walkerinfo.com. Hello, everyone. I'm Pat Gibbons. I'm the guest host today of the CX Leader Podcast, and thank you for listening. On the CX Leader Podcast, we explore topics and themes to help leaders like you leverage all the benefits of customer experience and help your customers and prospects want to do more business with you. I'm sure many of our listeners at one point in time have experienced a visit to a theme park. But let's be honest, the theme park experiences provided by the Walt Disney Company are arguably some of the best. But it's not easy creating the magical world that guests have come to enjoy and making certain your employees, or in this case, cast members, provide that magical experience. All this means that it's essential that the employee's experience is a high priority. My guest on the podcast today is Francesca Tempestini, a former cast member at Disneyland Paris and one of the contributing authors of a new book, Customer Experience 3, which features 28 international customer experience professionals sharing their current best thinking, strategies, and insights for achieving impact and visibility using world-class, best-practice CX principles. Francesca, thanks for being on the CX Leader Podcast. Hello, Patrick. Thank you for having me. Well, it's wonderful to have you. And we were talking beforehand. I believe you are the first guest that we have had call in from Italy. Yay! That's fantastic. <laughs> Yay! All right. <laughs> well, you know, I noticed in the book that uh, one of the descriptions, and, and I'll quote it here, that you are an enthusiastic disseminator of the Disney approach and a customer experience lover. Okay, with that statement, you got to give us a little background. Tell us about a little of your career and how you arrived to be uh, both uh, a, an enthusiastic disseminator of the Disney approach and a customer experience lover. Absolutely. But first, let me correct you. That book, it's made by 27 um, professionals and one lover, which is me. <laughs> so... Ah, okay. I stand <laughs> corrected. <laughs> well, why the Disney approach? Um, as a cast member, of course, I was um, born, let's say, uh, my Disney career was born with those principles in my blood, <laughs> meaning that uh, whenever any cast member in the world uh, goes and uh, starts his career at the Disney uh, company. He starts with the tradition, which is a two-day training in which they are um, all the uh, principles of the company and the expectation are um, presented to the the, um, the future cast member. So um, those includes as well some um, behaviors. Let's say not only uh, behaviors with customers, but behaviors with the theme as well. So expectation of what any employee he has to uh, produce, let's say, with the teammates. So um, that came very normal to me, very natural, because I was actually brought to uh, live in that way. And at the same time, um, since these principles are normal, that's, uh, they really coincide with my thinking. Um, I found them very useful in a way. And um, so I um, let's say that I approached the Disney approach without even knowing that it was a specific approach. Mm -hmm. To me, it was a normal way of working, something that you would find anywhere in any company in the world, which 
is not a case. And, uh, <laughs> you realize that that is not yes, later. the case, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I realized it later when I left the company and I stepped into the muggle world and I uh, start having <laughs> other kinds of jobs and I start saying, okay, no, this is not like Disney. No, this is not like Disney. And at, th- at first I thought I was just complaining too much. And I said, okay, yeah, you cannot compare everything to Disney. Uh, that's something different. That's entertainment. That's another the world and as well um my people i talked to my employee employers were telling me the same this is not disney this is not kansas anymore you're not in kansas yeah. anymore <laughs> so <laughs> spoken like a true italian <laughs> right, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was, it was Wizard of Oz, of course. Yes. And um, so I um, uh, I thought that the, the two things were different. You had a Disney way of working, a Disney approach, and then you had a normal life way of working. And um, many years later, because I have been in, uh, 10 years in this out Disney world, uh, many years later, I encountered customer experience. And I uh, saw that many of the principles, especially going toward uh, employee experience, experiences coincide with the, the Disney approach to work. So I lighten up, it's okay. <laughs> and I started to be <laughs> enthusiastic again. <laughs> because, <laughs> because I thought that it was fantastic, that I was not crazy, that I could actually see some Disney um, pieces in, in my everyday life. And I actually wanted to bring um, that side, that magical side in my work. And uh, when I saw that, that that this was possible and other companies were applying, I, was, I thought that it would be interesting to see how any small or medium company could um, um, implement uh, their way of working, um, making their own environment Disney-like without yeah. having a big budget, which is, made, I think, it's one of the big uh, issues normally. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to have compare your job with Apple or uh, Zappos or Disney, the first thing that an employer thinks is okay, budget, <laughs> but yeah. difference in budget. So right. I said, I thought I saw that. No, it's not. That's not everything that takes. You have some. There's other things that you can actually start doing when you want to make a change. Yeah. Well, so let me uh, kind of go back and hit a couple things. One, a, a clarification just for some. I Most people probably know this, but when you say you were a cast member at Disney, some may say, oh, well, what character did you play? But that's not what a cast member is, right? I'm a princess, but that's uh. in, in my everyday <laughs> life. <laughs> No, right. no, no. I actually, I did many things in my five years there. And uh, let's say that most of the time I spent it in guest relation and uh, guest care and guest service. So um, three departments which are all related to taking care of the customers. Mm-hmm. Of course, every job in Disney uh, has as a um, pinpoint uh, taking care of the customer any job even backstage even in the offices uh, where customers are not face to face with you but in those um, departments in which I uh, I worked uh, I actually faced them <laughs> and uh, yeah. um, they came to me whenever they had a problem or whenever they ha- were happy about something or whenever they, they wanted me to help them figure something out like uh, from the most common thing I have an allergy and I don't know where I can go eat or uh it's raining cats and dogs very strange in paris isn't it it's raining <laughs> cats and dogs and <laughs> what kind of ra- of rides can i do or even more serious matters uh, yeah. so, so that was my uh activity there yeah yeah so cast members are what disney refers to as their employees uh, yes. correct yes uh, yes. Uh, yes i'm sorry i I, no. I talk too much but yes basically no 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 <laughs> that's that's all good i that's that's uh, what i wanted to know so obviously you know you contributed to a book on customer experience and this is the cx leader uh, podcast but really a lot of your passion is around employee experience obviously they're connected how are they connected for you how did you kind of come around to that to see, you know, how vital it is that uh, employee experience is such a big part of customer experience. Well, um, employees are part of the equation of a business success. You cannot have uh, a business flourish without taking uh, employees into consideration. And this doesn't mean that you have to pay them more. It's not all all about money. Mm -hmm. It's a question of... um, 
considering them part of uh, the equilibrium that you have to have when you take any decision in, uh, into account. So um, what I saw is that um, any company that, what, what happened in the past what, what was that product was the first uh, element of the uh, in marketing that was considered whenever um, you had a discussion about a decision to take in a, in a, in a business. And often uh, the uh, human factor, uh, the employee factor was not really in the picture. This is something that with times uh, in the States has been it happened before than in Italy. Uh, with times this um, way of thinking came to change. And uh, now it's more evident than ever um, because maybe it's more easier to want to, to uh, realize that most of the companies that work and which are, do not consider employees uh, in the first place um, face some limitation because what, uh, what happened is that the person that takes care of your customers is the employee. Without the customers, you don't have any business. So if you, if your employees are not online with you on the same page and they share your values and present the company in the proper way to the customer, uh, you have a problem, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so no, you I, better and, face it. And I, I, I like your, your thought about kind of this evolution from a product-minded, uh, kind of product-centric company to customer and employee and so forth. Because you know, we've we've also done some research on that, and we've found that you know the products are things that can be duplicated pretty quickly and all that. But if you create a, a really incredible customer experience, that's hard to duplicate, and that gives you an edge for your competitors. But then it's pretty easy then to make the connection to say, well, we can't create that unless we have a great employee experience. And uh, it sounds like certainly you've you've found that to be true. Yes, absolutely. Of course, then probably this will be different um, according to the size of the company and the product. In my own company, well, it's not my own, in the company where I'm working at the moment, <laughs> which <laughs> which is a small company, I see this very often because my, my actual role is um, um, I am an export manager. So I work in CX undercover <laughs> because I'm trying to introduce CX and employee uh, experience elements in my company. Uh, without having that as a role, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, what happened is that being an expo expert manager, I am. I, I do talk with clients. I do talk to distributors and to agents and to uh, final customers a lot and to installers and features. And I see that it happened to me that many came back after some years saying, you know, I, I, your, your, your product is very nice, yes. So I would try to switch and try something else. And uh, I'm coming back to you because you helped me solve that problem or because you, because we had a connection, because I remember you, because uh, in that particular moment you were there. And uh, even if it was seven o'clock in the morning, um, life experience. I mean, uh, many people come back to us because they remember us and not, not really the brand, not the product. And they can actually overview and if the uh, product is a little bit more expensive rather than another or a little be less performing as well. But if they know that they can rely on you, um, they like that. And we, yes. we, we are all customers today. We, all, we, are every, we do buy things so right, we right. do know that unless it's something that you buy at the supermarket and you go away but if it's something that you uh, keep buying again and again or you if you have to give your own advice to someone uh, you will take into consideration how you were treated not only when everything was okay but when you had a problem absolutely no i mean customers today are much more discerning and they uh, will look at the entire experience, you know, not just the product and how it works and all that. If, uh, if there are two products and they like the way somebody treats them better or they like what they stand for, or, you know, there's lots of things that go into customer decisions today. You know, I think um, I, I also read that uh, uh, your experience as an employee coming on to Disney, that uh, all along the way there were, you know, things that they just did differently. Um, you know, their onboarding, every, maybe you can talk a little bit about 
those things and maybe how that's influenced you in some of your other roles. Yes. Well, the very first job that I got after Disney, uh, which was not my actual one. So it's a disclaimer. If anyone from a company is listening, I'm not talking about you guys. (laughs) (laughs) Well, the first job was um, didn't last very much with me because um, uh, my introduction was, hello, everyone, three people. This is Francesca. This is going to be her desk, and she's going to take care of customers over the phone, and please say hello. And everyone said, hello. <laughs> what a nice, warm welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So it was, it felt a little bit weird. And then, of course, then you start adding all the other elements, like even not nice walls or not neat uh, uh, floors. <laughs> and uh, but Or even more consistent problems, like I was answering the phone for this transport company, which was, um, uh, it was a bus service. And they had buses everywhere in Italy. And I had to keep. Uh, take calls from places I didn't even know existed so I had to come to uh, have advise people on what uh, bus to take and I had no idea which region we were talking about so yeah. um, and I felt bad asking my clients okay but my clients were people over the phone were, where are you actually calling from because uh, they were expecting me to know and I was frustrated because I didn't have any map around me. So it was very, very strange. And so, of course, for my first thought, okay, was in Disney, this would never happen. <laughs> because mm-hmm. um, I've been in many different sect- um, departments there. Uh, sometimes I would be uh, gone just for one day to help them out in uh, in, in a day in which they, they had a lot of, uh, um, they knew they had a lot of, of uh, uh, people or um, less personnel. and. Um, uh, every time it started with an introduction of the most important things I had to know about that place. Who are you going to work with? What do we do here? How do we do it? Uh, if you have a problem, to whom do you have to talk to? Um, basic things, important, because sometimes I worked in places for like five hours um, and the person that comes to you will pretend from you, will uh, expect from you the same information and the same quality of information than anyone else. And sometimes if you are there, it's because they don't have any choice. So there's no one else to ask to. So you better know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Well, and I I assume that that, you know, when you are prepared, when the rules are laid out, when the information is complete, it just gives you a certain level of confidence, which that comes through to the customer, right? Yes, absolutely. And it reflects because um, if imagine... I was in this restaurant helping for one day and it was a very busy morning uh, with breakfast and people would ask me all kinds of questions and I had no one to turn. If every time I had to stop and go looking for someone because one of the golden rule is Disney is always give an answer to the person. Um, if I had to stop and go looking for someone that would take forever. So uh, it was in, uh, in my manager uh, interest to spend 10 minutes of his time that morning and tell me everything. And coming back to your question, what was the difference? Well, um, well, that was the main difference, just not giving the employees the tools to work, giving the tools, it sounds, it sounds something ridiculously, ridiculously obvious, but, but it's not, apparently it's not. It happens often that someone comes to work and a new person and f- for some reason, sometimes it's, it's rivalry, uh, so others don't uh, share information uh, or that's just because uh, it happened with them, with, with, with this uh, employees before. So they think it's normal, that that's the normal way of, of, uh, of proceeding. There might be many factor and all of them go back to company culture. Um, it is um, something very easy to do. Let's say. Well, easy if you have the mind that you want to do it. Right. Otherwise, right. not easy. If you decide that you want to um, work in a proper way for your own benefit, I'm talking as a manager, um, uh-huh. you, will, uh, you have to decide, as you said, which rules you want your employees to follow, uh, which uh, examples uh, you have to get, give them the tools, but you have to talk. They do not read your mind. So all of these pieces of information have to be clear and they have to have a person to whom they can ask the missing information because they're going to be many, of course. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah th- those are the, the, the first basic steps. 
Yeah. And I, you know, I noticed you, you made a comment earlier that I, I appreciated that uh, you don't have to be a big, huge company to be able to do this. And I, I will admit, I'm one of those skeptics when I see all the same companies, you know, Southwest Airlines and Zappos and Amazon as the examples. You know, sometimes you feel like, well, my company can't, can't do that. But I think uh, it sounds like you have some thoughts on the little things that make a big difference that any company can uh, put into place. Yes, this is exactly what I noticed. And I actually kept note of them um, over the years or so as a way of having fun <laughs> and sometimes to think about the gold days at Disney. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but um, I didn't know that one day those notes would come useful to me and, and here they are. Um, so yes, the small things, even introducing a person uh, to, to the uh, the other people it happened, yes, in this, uh, okay, this time it happens in the current place in which I'm working. So <laughs> I have to be fair, not everything, it's always pink everywhere. So it happened that I, I walked in the break room one day and I start talking to a person sitting there and I uh, said, okay, uh, who do you have to visit? Who With whom do you have um, an appointment? No, I work here. What? Yes, I work here <laughs> ever since. Well, has been six months. What? Oh, <laughs> six my, months? Yeah. yeah, we are a small company. We are not. Mm-hmm. A, we just happen to be working on a, on another floor, <laughs> but it's not a. <laughs> I mean, it's two floors. It's not even a ten floors of a building. <laughs> so that kind of thing, no, cannot happen. First of all, because yeah. uh, what he was doing was actually something I could have used. Uh, his mm-hmm. skills and capability, and and the same way around. Around. So not knowing that that person was there was awkward for both of us, <laughs> and there was actually a lack of, um, uh, let's say, um, of uh, he was not being um, useful at the entire potential that he, that he had. And me in the same way. He, he didn't know that for anything that that was um, related to uh, to the French market, to the foreign market, it was me. And how could you not work in a company not even knowing what your few colleagues are doing? Right, right. Yeah, it's uh, you're right. It comes down to some of the basics, and uh, you know that involves onboarding and everything after that. So, so Francesca, it sounds like you know one of the things that uh, you have found that is really important is mapping the journey of the employee. Maybe you can talk a little bit about that. You have to uh, consider your employees as your first customers. And what you will do uh, for a customer will be journey mapping. So uh, if you want to improve in your customer experience um, uh, route, uh, so you will have to consider the uh, the all the touch points that you have. And Disney does that very well. I remember very well the welcome letter they sent me before I even signed the contract, and uh, which was the very first big touch point. And even the, the last one after I left. So journey mapping with with employees is the same. You have to uh, you have you you better <laughs> um, uh-huh. listen to what is their journey with you um, because you want your place to be desirable. You can hire high if you. Um, are able as a company to um, uh, to to have people uh, be willing to come work with you. So it, it's it is if it, it's the other way around. If you go, it's like in a courtship in a way. So if they are <laughs> both, if it's a relation, I mean it's a business right. relation, but it's still a relation, and we are human. So everything works in a, in the same way if you want. Um, so you you have to have the other willing to be with you. Um, and that's the same thing for an employee. So you better um, state what you are and uh, what you can do for the employee and uh, if you want to attract people. Again, it doesn't have to be um, big numbers, big, sa- big salary, or but just be friendly. friendly. That would be a nice start. Uh, a friendly place to work. It's already a nice place to work. Right. And then from there to go to great place to work, of course, you will have to um, to, to uh, work on your way. And but considering the pain points of the of the employees and working on them and the touch points and um, listening to their uh, to what they have to say, so to uh, making sure they have the possibility to talk to you. 
but not talk to the wall. Uh, you, you really need should uh, make them feel considered. <laughs> so the nice thing uh, is if you have a place in which you can actually throw those ideas and then you have your um, people able to um, extrapolate something nice out of it, well, that's a friendly place of work and that's a place that could actually be a great place to work. Well, we have come to that point in the program where uh, we ask for what we call take-home value. It's the one tip that you've got that uh, people can turn around and hopefully use in their business today, tomorrow, right away, in other words. So, uh, Francesca, what is your take-home value tip? Well, I think that it's very important for the uh, customer experience people when they're dealing with employees to keep to help them sparkle. If that person has been hired, uh, someone has seen something in him or her which might have been uh, faded away with time, um, you have to help that sparkle to come back. And that's for your own uh, benefit since you're paying him. That's great. Help that person sparkle. That's uh, that's definitely something that sticks with you, and I hope it sticks with all our, our listeners as well. Francesca Tepestini is a contributing author for the new book, Customer Experience 3. You can find it on Amazon and other major book re- retailers, and we'll have a link to it on our website, cxleaderpodcast.com. It's a great read with wonderful advice from CX Pros. I highly recommend you check it out. So, Francesca, thanks again for being a guest on the CX Leader Podcast. It has been an honor. Thank you for having me, Patrick. And if people want to continue the conversation, I I know they can find you on LinkedIn and they can send you a message that way. Absolutely. I accept everyone and I like to engage conversation with everyone. So if you write to me, be sure that I will talk to you. I am not surprised at all about that. You've been a wonderful guest and uh, I love uh, the energy that you approach your work and your passions. If you want to talk about anything you've heard on this podcast or how Walker can help you in your customer experience programs, feel free to email us at podcast at walkerinfo.com. And be sure to check out our website, cxleaderpodcast.com, to subscribe to the show and find all our previous episodes, podcast series, contact information, so you can let us know how we're doing. We have over 160 great episodes. The CX Leader Podcast is a production of Walker. We're an experience management firm that helps companies accelerate their XM success. You can read more about us at walkerinfo.com. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time.